25 phút Hello everyone, welcome back to Lights On. I am your host, Alexis Belmonte. And today what I want to be talking about is um, some things that keep us from advancing in the kingdom. You know, there is a process to advancement in the kingdom. And I believe that it starts with first salvation and after salvation getting our souls healed. You know, there's so many people that have accepted Jesus that are, you know, living their lives, they, they, they uh, received him as Lord and Savior, and they're doing their best in order to live their life for God, but they're still struggling. You know, I lead a inner healing and deliverance ministry at my church, and one of the things that I see all the time are people who love God, who are coming in, they're coming in because they know that they're struggling with different issues, and they want to move forward in the things of God, but these issues are keeping them from moving forward. And so in that class, we focus on getting deliverance, but we also focus on getting healed. It's so important that we're not just receiving deliverance, but that we're also getting healed. And so whether it's some type of behavior or it's an attitude or it's an action, it's something that affects our ability in order to move forward in the things of God. When I first became a believer and I started coming to church and you know, I, I ended up backsliding for about a year and a half. And when I came back to the Lord, I, I, I wanted to serve God with all of my heart. And I was giving everything that I had to serve God. And I was growing and I was moving forward. But I got to this point where I felt like I could only go so far. And then I was hitting this wall. I was hitting this wall. I was hitting this wall. I ended up be, being in a really bad relationship, and I really had a lot of trauma from that relationship, a lot of hurt, but one of the things that God did through that hurt was he brought me to a place of deliverance, and I didn't even know that I needed to be delivered. I didn't realize that all of the things that I had faced in my entire life, things that I went through in childhood all the way up to my adulthood, things that I faced in relationships, you know, things when I was married, I, I got married at, you know, a very young age. It was a very abusive relationship. I got divorced, you know, a couple years later. Um, but all of those things caused wounds in my soul. And in those wounds were uh, keeping me from moving forward in the things of God. It wasn't that I didn't love God. It wasn't that I wasn't trying. It wasn't that I wasn't going to church. I was around other believers. I was fellowshipping with other believers. I was in the classes. But I needed to get these wounds in my soul healed. So what is a soul wound? A soul wound is an emotional hurt that has not yet been addressed. You know, when we, when we have these hurts and these pains and these traumas that happen in life and we don't address them, they cause wounds in our soul. You know, I want you to think about it like, um, say, you know, you get hurt, you break your arm. If you don't address the break in your arm, your arm is gonna try to heal itself, but it's not gonna heal properly. And in order for you to actually get that arm healed properly, you're gonna have to re-break it and reset it and allow it to heal and give it time to heal. It's the same with us in our relationships and the things that we've experienced. We have to take that time to get our soul healed. We have to go through the process. You know, so we know that we are three parts, right? We are a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. You know, I don't know if you've heard that before, that saying, um, but we are a spirit that lives in a body that has a soul. And our soul is our mind and it's our intellect. It, that's the part of our soul, our mind and our intellect. You know, we see in Hebrews 4.12, the kind of the separation of the mind, the soul, and the body. And I just wanna read this to you really quickly. It says in Hebrews um, 4.12, it says, For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, like a two-mouthed sword, or other versions, versions say a double-edged sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being where soul and spirit, um, bone and marrow meet. It interrupts and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our heart. So the word of God is so powerful that it comes to the point even separating the soul and the spirit and joint and marrow, which is the body, and it penetrates deep into our heart until it interrupt, interprets and reveals the true thoughts and the secret motives of our heart. You know, in that portion of scripture, the word heart is cardia, and it's the word where we get the word, you know, cardia. 
but it's cardia, and the meaning of it is the emotional center of our being and the capacity of moral preference. It's the part of us that produces desire. It's the inner part of our mind where decisions are made. The heart is the part of each of us that defines who we are. So the soul, our mind, our intellect, our will, our emotions, that's what gets affected when we, get, when we experience trauma, when we experience hurt, when we experience pain. It affects our will, it affects our mind, it affects our emotions. And when our behaviors and our actions are messed up, when our emotions are messed up, we're going to have a very hard time moving forward in the things of God. It doesn't mean that we don't love God. It doesn't mean that we don't have, you know, that we're, we don't have salvation. It doesn't even mean that we're, you know, not filled with the Holy Spirit. We can be very much filled with the Holy Spirit, saved, love God, doing everything that we can. But if we have those wounds, they affect our will, they affect our actions, they affect our morals, they affect our emotions, and they will keep us from moving forward in the things of God. So there is a part, this is the part that the devil loves to play on. The devil loves to pollute us with wounds. You know, everything that we will do in our life with Christ has to do with relationship. And so the enemy loves to pollute our soul with wounds, and he loves to use people. And so I don't know if you, maybe you grew up and you were rejected by your mom, or you were rejected by your dad. Maybe you faced abuse. Maybe you were sexually abused. Maybe you were in a bad relationship. Maybe you were in an abusive marriage. Maybe it was an emotional abuse or a mental abuse. Maybe you experienced some trauma. Something happened to somebody that you loved or something happened to you that caused trauma. These are things that the enemy loves to play on. And he loves to pollute our soul with these things so that we never have healthy relationships with each other. Because if we can't have a healthy relationship with each other, how can we really have a healthy relationship with God? And vice versa, if we can't have a healthy relationship with God, how will we ever have a healthy relationship with each other? And so the enemy loves to play on these soul wounds that are caused by these passports in order to drag a believer, which is you and I, if you've received Jesus, you're a believer, he, in order to drag us down and make us um, stumble in our walk with God. Um, I love this scripture in John 10, 10. And I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation. And I'm um, reading just the first part of that. And we're going to go through the whole scripture. But I want to start with just the first part. It says, the thief has only one thing in mind. You know, I love the way the Passion Translation puts it. Other versions say, the thief comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. But the Passion Translation says, the thief has only one thing in mind. Who is the thief? The thief is the devil. He is the thief. He's the one who wants to steal our purpose, steal our destiny. He wants to rob us. He doesn't want us to experience the abundant life that God has for us. He has only one thing in mind, and that one thing is to, it's to um, kill us, it's to destroy us, and it's to slaughter us, is what the Passion Translation says. So he plays on those unhealed wounds in our soul. He plays on them in order to do this, okay? So... Getting saved or receiving Jesus and receiving salvation is the beginning, but our wounds are not healed automatically. It's a process that we have to walk through. And that process is the inner healing and the deliverance process. So the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But God came that we might, we might have life and life more abundantly. So salvation is the first part of that abundant life. And the second part of that is the healing and the deliverance. And so I know I'm repeating these things a little bit because I want you to get a good understanding. The enemy's job is to still kill and destroy. It's been from the very beginning. He was in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, and his job was to separate and to divide our relationship with God. He lied to Eve. Eve believed the lie. She ate of the fruit. You know, sin entered the world, and sin has been ravishing our bodies, our minds, our will, and our emotions ever since the beginning. And it's always been what the enemy had in mind, to keep us from the abundant life that God has for us. So what does the deliverance process look like? I'm going to talk a little bit about the deliverance process, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the healing process, and then I want to give you some really simple practical tips, that tools that you can use in order to actually start walking in that healing, 
Okay, so the deliverance process can look different for everyone. You know, when I'm teaching in my deliverance class, I want to make it so clear to everyone that it may not look like the person that you're sitting next to. It might not look like how, you know, sister so-and-so did it or how brother so-and-so got healed. The deliverance process looks different for everyone because we've all experienced different things in our life. We've all faced different things. We've encountered different things. We've had different traumas. And even more than that, we deal with things differently. So I might deal with something, you know, the same issue that you had differently. And so the experience for me is going to be different. So deliverance, the deliverance process can look different for everyone, but it's an important part of our journey as believers. You know, we're going to receive deliverance probably until the day we die. You know, there's so many things that we have gone through in life that it has to be a process. You know, I always say if God delivered me all at once, I'd probably die because I've experienced so much hurt and so many, so much pain. And if I had to deal with it all at one time, it would really destroy me. And so God loves us so much that he's willing to walk with us through the process of healing and deliverance. So when sin in our lives gives the enemy access, you know, the sin in our lives gives the enemy access. And through salvation, Jesus defeated sin and death, okay? 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that our spirit is new. You know, we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things pass away. All things become new. Our spirit is new, but our soul and our body still need to be healed. So when we receive Christ through the Holy Spirit, we can now begin the work of deliverance and healing. Okay? We can be saved and on our way to heaven and full of the Holy Spirit, like I said earlier, and still be bound by our past and our, our past pain and our past trauma and hurt. So we need to have that deliverance. There's a need not just for the deliverance, but for the healing. And, you know, the deliverance deals with the, um, the spirit. The deliverance deals with the spirits that are attached to those, to those wounds. But the healing actually deals with the actual wound, okay? So if a person only gets delivered, but they don't deal with the wound in their soul, that person will soon be back for deliverance. So I don't know about you. Maybe you've received deliverance before. Maybe, you know, God set you free from some things that you were dealing with. And you, you only received deliverance, but you never dealt with the wounds in your soul. And you find yourself kind of going back into that place of dealing with those things all over again. And you find yourself back at the altar or back, you know, at the pastor's house asking for deliverance again. Deliverance is only part of the process. We have to get delivered. We have to get set free from the, the spirits that are attached to those wounds, but we have to get that wound healed. If we don't get that wound healed, it remains open and it remains a target giving the enemy access into our lives to come back and to begin to play on that wound again. So deliverance is huge. It's important. It's an important part of the process, but we need to go through the healing process also. So if a person only gets delivered but doesn't deal with the wound in their soul, that person will soon be back at the altar for deliverance, okay? So deliverance is the first part. So I don't know if you've heard the saying, time heals all wounds. You know, a lot of people say, that, oh, just give it time. You know, time heals all wounds. And that's not true because time doesn't heal any wounds. The only thing that can heal those wounds in our soul is the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and Jesus Christ. Jesus heals all wounds. He said, by, your, by my stripes, you have been made whole. It's what Jesus did on the cross. It's receiving what Jesus did on the cross, receiving him as Lord and Savior that begins to heal those wounds. So it's time will not heal all wounds. Only by the word and the anointing of the Holy Spirit can we be set free. We need to get the word of God and we need to partner with the Holy Spirit and the anointing of the Holy Spirit in order to be set free. Isaiah 10, 27 says in the King James Version, and it shall come to pass in that day that all burdens shall be taken away from thy shoulder and, that, and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. 
You know, in this portion of scripture, the Assyrian army was coming after the children of God, and they had put, he had put a yoke, he had put them in slavery. And God was saying, there's a time coming when I'm going to take the yoke off of your neck. No longer will you have that yoke. And what is going to break the yoke is the anointing. And who is Jesus? He's called the anointed one. So the anointing is what destroys the yoke of bondage in our lives. So we need that partnership in the word of God and with the Holy Spirit. So inner healing and deliverance is the process by which someone is delivered and healed from past trauma and pain. And these are the things that hinder us from enjoying that abundant life. So in John 10, 10, we saw the first part of that scripture where it said that the thieves has one thing in mind. He has one thing, and that's to kill, steal, and destroy. But the second part of that scripture in John 10.10 10 is, but I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you can expect, life in its fullness until you overflow. When we receive that healing and the deliverance, our lives begin to overflow. We begin to receive the abundant life. We begin to advance in the kingdom of God. And not only are we advancing, but we're able to help other people advance. We're able to do the work that we've been called to do. We're able now to go and to disciple others and to help others get set free and healed. But it starts with us. We, Our lives will overflow. We'll, we'll walk in the fullness of all that Jesus died for us to have. Inner healing is a transformation and a, renova a renovation of our souls, okay? So this happens through the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. We need both. We need the Word. We need the Holy Spirit. We need healing and we need deliverance. We need to walk in these things. So I want to give you just some steps. How do we walk in healing and deliverance? Number one, we have to take inventory. You know, sometimes it's really painful to go back into our past and to remember the things that have happened to us, the things that we've experienced, things that have hurt us, the traumas that we experience. But God will never bring anything to the surface in your life that will hurt you. He never does it with the intention to bring you more pain and more hurt. Whenever the Holy Spirit begins to um, expose things in our life, he exposes them so that he can heal us, so that he can remove that thing from our lives and begin to heal that area of our lives. You know, Psalms 139, 23 through 24, it says, search me and know me. He said, search me. He was taking inventory of his life. Search me and know me. Know my ways. Know my anxious thoughts. See if there be anything in me that offends you, Lord, and lead me on the path of righteousness. We have to take inventory. We have to kind of revisit some of those things that we've experienced. You know, I, I remember, you know, being in that relationship and, you know, getting married and um, growing up and just seeing nothing but abuse in my life and having abusive relationships and then marrying into abuse. That's painful to remember that. But if I never get healed from that, I can't move forward into a healthy relationship. So we have to take inventory in those areas of our life. Number two, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to bring those things to the surface that may be hidden or unknown. You know, recently I was praying for a sister at church in our inner healing and deliverance class. And she said, going through this class, the Holy Spirit revealed something to me. And she remembered something that happened to her as a teenager that she had forgotten about or because of the pain she oppressed it. But she allowed the Holy Spirit to bring that thing um, to remembrance so that it could be dealt with and that she could receive healing from that. So we have to allow the Holy Spirit to bring those things. And we have to ask, you know, Holy Spirit, search me. See if there's anything in me. Maybe there's something that I don't remember. Maybe it happened when I was little and I, it was so hurtful that I repressed it or I pushed it down or I forgot about it. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to do that work and to trust that the Holy Spirit is not trying to hurt us, but is going to walk us through the steps of healing. Okay? Um, number three, we have to forgive and ask for forgiveness. This is so important. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 6.15 that if we don't forgive, we will not be forgiven. It is so important that we are forgiving those have, that have hurt us, and our forgiveness doesn't mean that what they did was okay. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't say, okay, you know, I what you did was okay. It doesn't mean that. When we forgive, it's more for us than it is for the other person. 
Because unforgiveness will keep us in a spiritual prison. It will keep us locked up and bound, and never to be able to get out. I always share that holding on to unforgiveness is like being in a prison that's unlocked. All we have to do is open the door and walk out. But if we hold on to unforgiveness, we're sitting in a cell, we're imprisoned in that, we're in bondage to it, and that other person may not even be affected by it, they may not even know, but that unforgiveness is affecting you. And so when we forgive, it's for us. It's to set us free and to let us to let us be healed so that we can begin to move forward in the things of God. So number four, we have to renounce all demonic spirits that might have been attached to that. So for example, um, with unforgiveness can come hate. It can come anger. It can come bitterness, rejection, abuse, abandonment, unforgiveness. These are some things that we have to renounce. You know, I renounce the spirit of rejection. You know, when I was little and my mom rejected me, I renounce that. We have to begin to renounce these spirits and break their hold off of our life. Um, the next part is to spend time in the word of God and prayer um, so that we can receive a renewing of our mind. You know, sometimes the deliverance that you will receive is just by renewing your mind, tearing down the stronghold, which are lies that have been fortified by the enemy. When we begin to allow the word to wash over us, it begins to renew our mind. And now we're able to see what's the truth and what's the lie. And now we can come against the lie with the truth. So we have to allow the word to renew our mind. Romans 12, 2 said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then the last thing is now we have to guard our hearts and our minds. Ephesians 6 tells us, tells us to take up the full armor of God so that we will be able to stand in the day of battle. And when we take up the full armor of God in Ephesians 6, the helmet of salvation, to cover our mind, to guard our mind and our thoughts, the breastplate of righteousness that is a shield upon our hearts and our vital organs, the belt of truth, which is the word of God. It holds all the armor together. The truth of God holds everything together that our feet are ready with the gospel of peace, that we carry peace everywhere we go, that we have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's our weapon and the shield of faith to extinguish all the arrows of the enemy. So no matter what the enemy tries to come our way with, we have the shield of faith, believing what Jesus did on the cross for us and receiving it by faith and standing on the truth of God. And so I just want to pray for you um, before we close. If you are dealing with any of these wounds, maybe you've experienced some things in your childhood, maybe it was in your you know, adolescence, maybe as an adult, maybe it was through a relationship, or it was something from your mother or your father, maybe it was an uncle or brother, it doesn't matter what it was, but if you feel like there's areas in your life that have caused you pain, that have caused trauma, and that you feel like, man, I'm doing everything I can, I love God with all my heart, I believe in Jesus, I receive salvation, and I'm doing everything I can, but I don't feel like I'm advancing. I don't feel like I'm, I'm moving forward in the things of God. I just want to pray for you. So I want you to just go ahead and lift up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask that every person that is watching God, that is, um, has a hurt or a pain, God, that is dealing with trauma, abuse, and wounds from their past, Lord God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would begin to just touch their lives, Lord God, that you would begin to touch their minds, that you would begin to break off of them, Lord, their hurt and the pain and the trauma, God. And as they begin to sit in your presence and allow you, Holy Spirit, to reveal these things to them in their life, that they would trust you in the process to begin to heal those areas and those wounds. I just come against the, every attack of the enemy that would hinder and that would try to keep them from walking through this process of healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. And I just ask, Lord, for just your peace, God, to guard their mind and their heart, God, that your peace would um, cover them, that it would wash over them, Lord, that they would be um, safe in the shadow of your wing, Lord, God, that they would take refuge in the shadow of your wing, Lord, and that they would be safe in that place, Lord, God, so that they can receive the abundant life, the overflow of everything that you promised us in Christ Jesus. And so I just thank you guys. If you prayed that prayer, I want to just let you know that we do have prayer lines open. Um, you can call 714-299-5026 or 714-299-6098.
8, and they're also on the screen. If you need any additional prayer or you pray this prayer and you want to talk with somebody, the prayer lines are open for you. And so thank you so much for joining me tonight. I love you guys. Until next time, be the light. Amen.